And I've got on the line right now uh, from her parents' home, I guess, in, in, in New York, Kelly Space. Kelly, are you there? Hi, I am. Hi. So let me just get a little background, too, on, on your situation. So you graduated from Northeastern. Yep. How many years did, did you graduate in, four years or five? I did four years with a couple of summer semesters. All right, so four years, you spent nearly, what, 190 grand. Yep. Over, that's that's about forty five thousand dollars a year. Mm-hmm. I mean, how much is the tuition at Northeastern? Actually, I've, uh, this year it's up to forty nine thousand dollars. But what was it when you went? Um, it was just a little less. It was around forty five. So it's forty. So you didn't borrow then money for you know for your apart your dorm room or your 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 food. All of that money was strictly to pay the tuition. I did. It was at, actually that was with room and board. So, well, that's room and board. Well, how much was yeah. just the tuition portion? That's what I'm curious was, about. Yeah, no, I think it was around twenty. I okay. Don't know. As soon as the bill came, I paid it with the loan. <laughs> right. So, but the tuition was only twenty. So, where were you living while you were going to school? I was living on campus the first two and a half, three, two and a half years, um, and then I did get an apartment the last year. So you borrowed the money to pay the rent on your apartment. Yes, I did. Right now, you also did you did you buy clothing or with any of the student loan money? No, nope, I didn't buy anything but tuition, um, room and board, book. That's it. So board, you paid for your food. Um, yeah, my meal plan the first couple of years as well. Yeah, so you got a meal plan in the dorms. What about when you were in an apartment? I mean, you used student money for you know to eat in restaurants no, or to. No, no, no. Or... I um I had a part time job throughout. Um, All right, so you worked a little bit. All right, so you borrowed a hundred and ninety thousand. Now you said now when you got these loans, I mean, did anybody when you went and got the loan, I mean, does anybody say question, I mean, whether or not you can pay the money back or how difficult it might be to try to pay this money back? Was no, anybody concerned what about I'm, you know uh, still a little confused about? No, that was never um brought up and so I I mean, having it not brought up makes you sort of think it's Fine. I mean, how hard was it? I mean, you didn't have to put up any collateral, right, to get these loans? No, not at, not at all. Right. Did they did they care what you were majoring in? Did they ask you, no. you know, what your major was? No, not at all. Did they care about your grades? I mean, could you have been get could you have been getting C's and D's, and you could have kept borrowing the money? Yeah, that wasn't an issue either. And apparently, neither was the fact that my parents were only uh, living on one income and. And, yeah, I mean, that was never an issue. Now, I mean, did you ever think, I mean, I understand right now, right, you're, you're, living, you're living with your parents because it's so expensive to pay back the debt. Right. Maybe, did you think about maybe when you went to school, going to school close to home so you could have lived at home back then instead yeah, of mean, borrowing money and maybe gone to a less expensive university? Yeah, I mean, that, the idea is, I mean, you know, you looking back, of course, I regret doing what I did. And, um, I think you have I a would... television set on in the background. Can you turn that down? Hello? Sorry, what was that? No, there was some background noise, but anyway, go ahead, finish what you're oh, saying. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I, you know, if I could go back in time, I would absolutely have gone to a state school or community college the first two years. Um, if I knew then what I know now. And at that time, you know, my option or my view was that I should just go to the best school um, that I applied to and that accepted me, and that was Northeastern at that time. But even though you couldn't afford it, you went anyway. Well, I mean, the idea, too, was that, uh, you know, my guidance counselor and financial aid advisor both told me to look into private loans and that money should never stop you from going to school. Um, so I, I was just under the impression that I was not the only one. So right. My but the only school. reason that you were able to go to this expensive school is because you were able to borrow the money to pay for it. Yeah, absolutely. And you know whose fault that was? I mean, I'd like to think it was a combination. <laughs> well, you know whose fault it was? I'm not going to say you. It was the government's fault. The government, I, I, I the government is responsible for you being $190,000 in debt because the government shouldn't have guaranteed those loans. There should be no government guaranteed student loans. Whenever, if you get interviewed anywhere, when you're talking about this, this is an example of why the government needs to get out of education because the government got you to borrow that money. There is no way in this world that a 19-year-old, a 20-year-old girl could have borrowed any money from anybody without a government guarantee. The yes. banks would know that you can't pay this off. You know, I'm looking at the numbers. My guesstimate is that based on your 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 loan payment is going to rise to 1600 a month for the next 20 years. Yep, next November. Right. So I my guesstimate is that if you get a job where you earn 50,000 a year, about 75% of your income is going to go to taxes and and, and payments on your student loan. You're going to yep. be left with about $1000 a month or $12,000 a year after a $50,000 job. 
And I still do, and I don't make that much. So <laughs> <laughs> now, let me also get this. So you make you majored in sociology. I did. Right now, I could see spending maybe <laughs> that kind of money if you were going to be a doctor. Yeah. But I mean, sociology. I mean, yeah. I mean, did some? I mean, did they have any guidance? That, what are you going to do with sociology? Well, I mean. I, I didn't start sociology. I started um, with psychology, then marketing, and then I was undecided. But you didn't even know. So you didn't even know what you exactly. wanted to do. Yet you exactly. were borrowing one hundred ninety thousand dollars to get a degree, and you didn't even know what you wanted to do. Exactly. Would it have been better if you just worked? Maybe if you could have skipped college and just gotten a job. Yeah, absolutely. I wish I'd explored all of my options. I mean, you got a job right now where you're working. You're working with a computer company. An internet company, yeah. Yeah. Now, let me ask you: Do you consult your sociology textbooks often to figure out how to do your job? Not at all. I mean, do you? I mean, do you? Is there anything about your job that your college degree prepared you for, or do you think you could have done this job out of high school? Um, I don't think I could have done it out of high school. I think my college experience definitely helped me, but no, not my major. <laughs> well, your car, college experience in what way? I mean, what um, it, I mean, I do feel in those four years I've matured as a person. But don't you think you could have matured just growing older? Even yeah, let's say you got a different job for the four years, and instead of borrowing all that money, maybe you got a different job. Couldn't couldn't work experience have prepared you for this job? That's yeah, that's absolutely possible. <laughs> I mean, my I mean, did you, I think, were you in a sorority? No, I wasn't. I mean, did you go to a lot of parties in college? No, not not. So I mean, much. I did. I don't know. You did. Why did? I mean, I mean, I think what college prepares you—it's a social experience. It you, is. You, you learn how to. You learn how to. You learn how to handle liquor. You learn how to. You know. You learn how to. I mean, you go to part. I mean, there is really nothing in a in a bat an undergraduate degree, a liberal arts degree, which is what you got in sociology. Mm -hmm. I mean, how does that differentiate you? You got all these other people that got almost everybody has a college degree. I I'm well aware. <laughs> I was under wrong assumption after wrong assumption. And also, now, what about your parents? I mean, did your parents ever see, because I blame, I mean, I blame the government first, right? The government never should have put you in this position. They never should have co-signed those loans for you. They, they are the reason that you're in debt, up to your eyeballs, right? It's the right. government's fault. But beyond the government, then the next I would blame your parents, mm -hmm. because your parents were old enough. Your parents should have looked at this and said, wait a minute, how could they let you borrow all this money knowing that you have to pay it back? Again, I, I think that sort of comes down to education as well. What do you mean? Um, neither of my parents graduated from college. Um, my, my father didn't graduate from high school. So um, we just had a very different view of college than I think maybe a lot of Americans or most, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, um, so they didn't understand it either. So maybe, you know, maybe they didn't have enough experience. But the, the real bottom line is do you, do you see that – I mean – Obviously, if there were no student loans available to you, if you couldn't get a government guaranteed loan, what would you have done? I would have worked. I would have saved up and gone to a community or a local school. Absolutely. And you would be much better off. Oh, I so much better off. <laughs> so, in other words, all this government help, all this government aid to education, that didn't help you at all. I don't think it did. It it, it put me in a really sticky position. So. But you know who got helped by that government aid? Who? Northeastern. Of course. They got they got that twenty thousand dollars a year in tuition that absent those government loans, they wouldn't have got. Absolutely. Now how many of your fellow students at Northeastern were getting government loans, were getting student loans to pay for their tuition? All of my friends. All of your friends. Yeah. Well what would have happened? What do you think would have happened if none of your friends could have borrowed any money? Would they any of them have gone to Northeastern? Mm, maybe one of them. That's it. Right. So none of your other – so you know what probably would have happened? See if you can figure this out. Let's say that none of your friends and none of the, and none of the other kids, because probably a lot of kids at Northeastern who you weren't friendly with were also right. getting government loans. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What if nobody could get a loan to go to Northeastern? What do you think would happen? I think the student body at Northeastern would have significantly dwindled. <laughs> and, and then what would the university do in response to that? Um – Maybe lower tuition? Well, absolutely. There, you hit the nail on the head. They would lower tuitions. Right. They would lower them to the point where you can afford them. In fact, if there were no student loans and there were no government-guaranteed student loans, you might have gone to Northeastern after all because yeah, you might have been true. able to afford it. The tuition true. might have been so low that you could have worked your way through school. Yeah. That's but instead, 
the government tried to, and I bet you, you thought it was a great. I guess when you were borrowing all this money, you probably thought it was great that the government was so nice and making it easy for you to get yeah. this great education. I did think that several times. <laughs> yeah, instead, now you know that they lured you into a, into a trap. Is it, I mean, and to be fair, my, mo my mother didn't even have to co-sign several of the loans with me. Well, because, they, because the government was co-signing the loans. I was co-signing the loan. All the people listening to this radio show were co-signing those loans. Yeah, we weren't no, doing I... it willingly. Right. Now, first of all, one of the things is, you know, you can't even discharge this in bankruptcy. I know. It's amazing. <laughs> now, I do believe that there is. Now, I think, isn't there something that says that your monthly payments are limited based on a percentage of what you earn? Um, those are federal loans, not private loans. Oh, so your loans have no limit. Right. Yeah, I mean, so basically... What if what if you ha what if you're not working? Because yeah. to me, it seems like you're probably better off not working at all. Well, I would I would still default at that point. Yeah, I mean, but when you default now, now what happens when you default? Can they can they try to garnish your wages? Yes, they can. Because um, personally, I think the best thing that you could do, other than maybe I mean maybe you'll get people to send you money. I know you have a website two hundred thou dot com and you're accepting donations, although. How do we know that you're actually going to use the money to pay off your loan? Because well, I wouldn't because if I were you. I would just take the money and I'd buy gold. I'd buy silver. I mean, no. you, you might take it and buy a new car. <laughs> no way. I have nothing else to put this money toward. So trust <laughs> because me. Because I think well. you'd probably be better off, to be honest, I think you'd be better off leaving the country and working someplace else. Because I, I, think, I think you're a slave to these loans. Between taxes, Social Security, in income taxes, and paying back this debt, I think you'd be a fool to keep to work in this country. I know. I've, I've considered it so many times. <laughs> I think, I mean, I would, you know, I'd, I'd go to another country and get a job where they can't garnish my wages. Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, I mean, that, that I mean, that would really, and there are probably other people that are in, that are in your circumstances. You know, people have asked me questions, you know, young kids about college. I've actually told people, I think it's better to skip college, just go into the workforce, and if you really need a college degree, for a job application, just make it up. I mean, what's just? I mean, just don't put down that you went to Harvard. You yeah. know, but if you put down some local community college, no one's going to check. This is true. I mean, because a college degree, your degree is not worth two hundred thousand. It's not even worth close to two hundred thousand dollars. Not a chance. Not a chance. <laughs> because your extra income, you're not going to be able to earn the present value of that. You know, in fact. Let's assume you had gone directly to the workforce. You could have worked for four years. You could have mm -hmm. built up some savings. And I'm an employer. I employ people. I would rather have four or five years of work experience behind a job applicant than yeah. four years of, of drinking beer at, at, at Northeastern and studying sociology. Yeah, I can see that, definitely. <laughs> but now, I don't know. Have you been, I mean, have you gotten, a, 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 have you been interviewed? Have you gotten on any um, ma ma television shows? Or are you getting a lot of press on this thing? Um, yeah, I've gotten a lot of press. I've done a lot of radio interviews. I don't did know anybody, how people are anybody that interviewed you, did anybody bring up the problems with the government guaranteed student loans and that if it wasn't for the government guarantee, you wouldn't be in this mess? No, most of them just brought up my naivety and, and wanted to know what my plan was from the start. But... Yeah, because, but that is the real story. Right? That's what you need to talk about. And let, we're going to come up for a commercial. So can you hang around for the next segment? Yeah, sure. Yeah, hold on, because I want to make sure that to the extent that you get interviewed anywhere again, that you make these points, because this is very important. So don't go away. We'll be back for the last segment of the Peter Schiff Show. We are back, and I am talking to Kelly Space. Uh, Kelly, you know, what I want to make sure that you that you get from this program, that you understand, and hopefully you can you can articulate this on any other interviews that you have, is the real story. Your real story is not about your website and you're trying to repay the money. The real story is that a teenage girl was able to borrow $200,000 because of government-guaranteed loans. That this is crazy, that in a free market economy, there is no way that you would have been able to borrow this money because nobody would lend it to you. People would know that you don't burden a 20-year-old with a $200,000 in debt, that they're not going to pay it back. But because the government co-signed it and basically co-signed you into indentured servitude for the rest of your life, you were able to borrow money that absent all these government loans you never could have borrowed. What you want to do is become an advocate 
against government guaranteed loans. You know, I ran for Senate here in Connecticut, mm -hmm. and part of my platform was to do just that. I wanted to abolish government loans so college tuition prices could fall, and so kids would not be burdened by all this debt. Now, my opponents was saying, well, I'm anti-education, I'm anti-student. Knowing what you know now, would it have been a good thing or a bad thing if you couldn't borrow this money? It would have been a great thing. Right. It would have been the best thing that could have happened to you. Definitely. Right. And that is what people don't understand. And your case makes it as plain as day that you would be much better off if there were no government student loans. Instead, you are $200,000 in debt because of all the unintended consequences of Washington do-good politicians. See, they try to make the students think they're on their side. Now, I know, have you been voting in elections? Yeah. How, do, how do, you, do you vote Democrat or Republican? Generally Democrat. Right. And, and is one of the reasons you voted Democrat because they want all this aid to education? Um, I mean, it was less about education, but I mean, I see your point. <laughs> well, I know a lot of the young people vote Democrat because the Democrats, we want money for education. We want to make grants available. We want student aid. We want student loans. I mean, they usually get the students vote by promising money for education. Right, right. But, of course, the reason that education is so expensive is because their aid allows the universities to jack up their prices. Right. Absolutely. So hopefully one thing that you can learn from this is that you don't want something from the government because it comes with a lot of strings and a lot of unintended consequences. What you need from government is for government to stay out. Definitely. That, and also what I've learned from this is that, I mean, I've received so many emails from people, so many people in my position and worse off. That, I mean, it's becoming evident that, that I'm not the only one. I'm not the worst. I'm well, can you, can you make a promise to me? Will you make this story about government and government-guaranteed student loans? And instead of you were a young girl, you don't know it. I mean, you were, you were 18, 19 when you started to borrow this money. I mean, you're yeah. really not even at the age where you should be making these kind of decisions. Absolutely. And the only reason you were able to do it was because the government guaranteed these loans. And right. then... The banks didn't care. They didn't care what they were doing to you. They didn't care how much of a burden they were placing on you. All they knew is they were going to get the money back because the government was going to pay them. Absolutely. I mean, would, doesn't that make you angry? Of course it does, of course. So but I need, I need an, an immediate fix. I need to fix this. I need to make my life better if no one else is going to do it for me. But speak about the real source of your problem. Speak about it as a government problem, as a government guaranteed loan, as, as the unintended consequences of how government is screwing all this up. Yes, okay. yeah, sure, you, you, you are part of the problem. You did borrow the money. Right. But you were 18, you were 19, and people were dangling this idea in front of you. you got to have the best degree. Who cares what it costs? People that you trust were telling you, who cares? Who cares? Just go to the best college. This is all propaganda by the educational establishment yeah. so they can overcharge kids with government money, and they graduate with mortgages and no houses. It is a disgrace what's happened, what's happened to you and what's happened to many young people like you. Definitely. All right, look, I'm glad that you agreed to come on this show. I wish you luck. Your website, for anybody that does want to make a donation, uh, 200000.com to help you pay off that debt. As I said, I think you're better off using that donation money for something else. I would leave the country. I'd take that money and use it for a plane ticket and to start a new life where you're not a, where you're not a serf, where you're not an indentured servant, because you shouldn't have to pay. The, it's ridiculous that, that, there, that, that this much money was loaned to you. Well, thank you very much for agreeing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much, and good luck to you. Anyway, that's it for today. We are running out of time. Don't forget, tomorrow, my guest is uh, the creator of the cartoon video on the Fed. I, I forget the guy's name, but he is the guest uh, on the show tomorrow. So make sure and tune in. And also, I am going to get into this discussion on, on civil rights and how it causes uh, discrimination in the workplace. So that'll be a very interesting discussion. Uh, so make sure uh, not to miss it. Take care, everybody. I will be back again tomorrow with another live episode of The Peter Schiff Show.